In this video, first we'll be covering some of the shortcuts to some typical quant problems asked in the CAT paper. I do not have my complete notes from my preparation days, but some of the shortcuts that I remember I have written down on a piece of paper. So I will be just sharing it with you. And second, I'll be covering some of the jugars on that you can use in quant. These are not shortcuts, but some kind of jugars like substitution that you can use while solving certain problems. And third, I will be sharing attempt strategy for quant that you can use to increase your percentile in the last few days. So now coming to the shortcuts, if you are a CAT 23 aspirant, obviously you have to take the shortcut as it is. But if you are a CAT 24 aspirant, do not only learn these shortcuts, but when you study the chapter, try to understand the concept behind it. Because I cannot guarantee you that you will get the exact same problem in your paper. But what I can guarantee you is you will get something related to this concept. And if you know the concept behind it, then it will really help you because what you can do if the sum is tweaked a little bit, you can reach the second last step and probably you can just tweak your calculation and accordingly get to the final answer but again if you do not know the concept behind it you will not be able to maneuver and you have to use the formula as it is so first let's start with arithmetic let's start with time speed distance you remember those circular motion there are some typical problems that you're asked like in how many points will two people meet and how far from the starting point will those two runners meet and so on so here what you have to do is for example if you are given two people say a and b running in a circular track and the question is in how many points do they meet what you have to do is first break their down their speed into the simplest ratio for example there are two runners a and b and their speeds are in the ratio say 10 meter per second and the other one is 30 meter per second b and now you have to break it down to the simplest form that is 1 is to 3 is the simplest form of this you cannot break it down further so a speed is 1 b is 3 if they are running in the same direction then the number of points in which they meet in the circle will be 3 minus 1 that is 2 and if they are running in opposite directions then the number of points in which they will meet in the circle will be 1 plus 3 that is 4. Similarly suppose the ratio of speed is 2 is to 5 then the number of points in which they will meet in if they are running in the same direction will be 5 minus 2 3 if they are running in opposite direction then it will be 2 plus 5 that is 7. So this is the concept in how many points do they meet. And remember the number of points where they meet and the points at which they meet will be equidistant from each other. That is if they are running suppose at 1 is to 3 and they are running in the same direction then they will meet at two particular points and that will be diametrically opposite to each other. If they are running in opposite direction they will meet at four points that also will be equidistant at four sides of the circle. Suppose the number of points in which they meet is eight or seven all those eight points will be equidistant from each other. This is a very important concept to understand because this will also help you determine how far from the starting point will these particular runners meet. To give you an example, suppose you are given A speed is 1 and B speed is 7 and their speed ratio is 1 is to 7 and you have to calculate the first meeting point. And if they are running in opposite direction, then they will meet at 1 plus 7 that is 8 equidistant points. And remember, these are equidistant points. So you have to, if you have to calculate the first meeting point, you can count 1 from the direction in which A is running and you can count 7 from the direction in which B is running. That will be their first meeting point. Similarly, from that particular point, the second meeting point will be again 1 from A's direction and 7 if you count from B's direction. And if you have to calculate the distance from the starting point, remember these are equidistant again. So circumference by 8 will give you the distance between each of these points. So from the starting point, if I have to calculate the distance, it will be the circumference by 8 into 1 will be the first starting point because that is you can see that particular point which is the first meeting point the second meeting point again circumference by 8 into 2 is the distance from the starting point and second shortcut is for simple interest compound interest remember this difference between a simple interest and compound interest accumulated in two years is pr square by 100 square where p is the principal r is the rate of interest and the difference between simple interest and compound interest in three years is 3 pr square by 100 square plus PR cube by 100 cube. The next shortcut is for time taken to double the money invested through CI. This is very easy to calculate normally as well. But if you know the formula, you can solve it in one second. The formula is 72 by R, where R is the rate of interest. So now if you're given that the rate of interest is 10%, in how many years will they double? So it will be sli the option slightly more than seven years. It's 7.2 years approximately. So anything above seven years, it will take to double the money invested in compound interest. Now coming to a typical problem in PNC, you would have come across these kind of problems that's okay, select 
थ्री नॉन कंजिव आइटम्स फ्रॉम ट्वेल्व आइटम्स इन अ रो और सिलेक्ट फोर पर्टिकुलर आइटम्स सच दैट इज अ गैप ऑफ टू बिटवीन ईच ऑफ दैम आउट ऑफ अ टोटल ऑफ ट्वेंटी आइटम्स एंड सो ऑन यर आई विल टीच यू द कॉन्सेप्ट सो दैट नो मैटर हाउ मच इज द गैप यू कैन यूज द सेम मेथड फॉर एवरी वन यू डो नॉट नीड टू रिमेंबर एनी वन पर्टिकुलर फॉर्मुला बिकॉज यू कैन नॉट कीप रिमेंबरिंग ईच एंड एवरी फॉर्मुला इफ द गैप इंक्रीजेज द फॉर्मुला विल चेंज सो सपोज द क्वेश्चन इज सिलेक्ट थ्री आइटम्स that says that there is a gap of 2 between each of them out of a total of 20 items so now what you have to do is right you have to select three items so a plus b plus c is equal to how many total items 20 so right 20 okay and after this there is a gap of 2 between each of them so between a and b there is a gap of 2 so right plus 2 between b and c there is a gap of 2 so right plus 2 there as well so now move it to the right side it becomes a plus b plus c is equal to 16 so your answer will be 16 c 3 for this problem Suppose you were asked three non-consecutive items you have to choose out of twenty. So now your answer would have been non-consecutive means a gap of one. So a plus one, b plus one. So uh, I'll move it to the right side. After that, a plus b plus c is equal to eighteen. So your answer would be eighteen c three. So suppose now I ask you the question: select three items such that there is a gap of three between each of them out of a total of twenty items. Do comment what will be the answer for this one. Now it should be very easy for you. And remember, all of these items have to be similar. I'm talking about similar items in all of these cases. And I remember an LRDS set that I solved in the mock using this concept, which became very easy using this shortcut. So the question initially was that you have to place three people on ten particular chairs such that no one is sitting adjacent. to each other so first it became very easy only thing that you had to do was after selecting the chairs you had to multiply it by 3 factorial because those three people can be arranged in any way so just that three factorial thing was missing that's why it's very important to understand the concepts behind these formula as well and uh, after that the next problem the next part of the set was that uh, i think uh, one more friend comes into the picture then then how in how many ways can this sit and then it was uh, one friend goes out but two more chairs are added then in how many ways can they arrange themselves so this was the entire set the entire set might have been very difficult but using the, this particular shortcut it was very easy to solve in 3 4 minutes and an extension of this formula suppose you are asked to select r non consecutive things from n things placed in a circle you will never be asked with a gap of 2 or 3 in a circle it will become very difficult non consecutive itself is very difficult so you can remember the formula for this that is n minus r plus 1 c r minus n minus r minus 1 c r minus 2 Please, if you are a Cat Twenty Four aspirant, try to remember the concept behind this. Understand the concept behind this, then it will be very easy to remember the formula. And you can see the first part, which is n minus r plus one c r. This is exactly similar to that of things placed in a particular line. It's exactly the similar. You have that extra component in a circle of that minus thing. The reason for that being, remember the last person. can be adjacent to the first person as well which is not the case if you place things in a particular line but in a circle the last person can be adjacent to the first person so some of the cases get reduced that's why you have the second component please go into the depth if you have time for this coming to some of the algebra shortcuts you can see some of the typical kind of identities that are asked i have put them on the screen you can screenshot this save this or write it down in your copy and i only remember these at the moment if there's a particular problem like this that you're facing a problem and maybe you can comment and i will remember if there's a generalized formula around that particular problem but currently i only remember these so let's take an example of any of them suppose the last one and i you have a question like root 5 root 5 root 5 and so on for infinite times the answer for that will be 5 so that is how these particular problems can be solved Now I realize that this video is getting really big. I do not want to keep one video very taxing. Just about ten minutes is fine. During the course of recording this video, I wrote some more formula, and now we are not even halfway through it. So it's better that other things in this video can be covered in the next part. Do not worry. Probably I would require more two parts to cover all the formula that I have. If I remember more formula uh, by the time I record the next one. So, but don't worry. I will cover everything within a particular week and definitely before your CAD exam. So see you in the next part of this. video.